Welcome, I'm Darren, and I'll be your guide today as I rank the worst insert card designs in 1993 for basketball. As I put together this list, I was pleased that all of the cards, I basically got eight cards on this list, and I was really pleased that all eight of these cards I feel do deserve to be on the card or on this list. None of the cards were cards that I thought were actually not too bad, but I had some notes. In the case of all of these cards, I really do think they're all disappointments. And, well, actually, I should, I should add that there's a ninth card that I'm going to be talking about that I'm going to kick it off with that is kind of the exact opposite. Because when I was putting together this list, I just knew that the Stadium Club Frequent Flyer Club points cards would definitely be on the list because, of course, they would. But really, at the end of the day, I realized that, no, I have begrudgingly been gathering respect for these cards over the years. I actually kind of like them. I think that they're pretty good cards. The reason I wanted to talk about them was the fact that I don't think that they should be on the list. So all the cards that I'm going to talk about, I think are not as good as these cards. I like them better. It does a lot of things that work really well. The blue color is really good. And the, the whole, the map on the card, I think is real. it looks really cool with the rainbow effect. I love the, the flight route between the home game and, or the, the home location and the, the stadium where, or the arena where the game had actually taken place. When I look at all of that stuff, it looks cool. But also at the end of the day, the, the nature of the card is designed where it, it was a, it was part of not a game, but a giveaway type of a setup. So these cards were interactive. You were supposed to redeem them. So these are essentially filler cards. That's the way that most people think about them. They look at them and they go, eh, it's, it's not important. And that's unfortunate that most people just don't appreciate these cards because if you're a team collector or a player collector, you're absolutely going to collect these cards because they relate to, even if you're a set builder and you're really into building sets, this is a set you're eventually going to try to put together, just like the information cards and the team cards, same thing. They're all filler cards you can throw away or you can go ahead and collect them. But if you're one of those people who just out of sight, out of mind, just dumps these to the side, you're missing out on a great opportunity. This is the difference, or this is a difference between collectors and people who like cards. People who like cards don't care about these. Collectors look at them and they actually see them and really appreciate them. And that's the thing about these cards. I think it's five for every single player, but they're all different. They have a different point total and they have a different flight, uh, flight path from whatever home stadium or home arena the player is associated with. So that means there's a variety to all these cards and then there's a, a complexity to the set, but the cards look really good. And that's the thing. This is an easy kind of overlooked kind of card. And so while I didn't want to put the team cards or the information cards on this list, this is a card I definitely wanted to because they are literally player cards. I mean, they absolutely are. So I wanted to put it on here basically to say this is a card that I'm glad didn't fit on this list because, well, it would be nice if some of these cards were better designed, but at least I can say this. This is a card that in theory should be on the list, but it doesn't deserve it because it's a much better card than you would otherwise think. So going on to the list, I have three honorable mentions and I'm starting off with Upper Deck with their all NBA cards. And these cards are, as you can see, a full bleed card and hardly anything else. Now, this is unfortunate because the 1993-94 Upper Deck set for basketball is one of the great sets for Upper Deck, probably the best ever because the actual cards in the set look amazing, but the inserts are almost all successes. I mean, the team MVP cards are about the biggest let, letdown of the entire group. And even it has some really nice qualities to it. It's just a fantastic set across the board with one exception. And the one clear exception is the all NBA cards because it's a full bleed image. And what beyond that? It's 
you know, it's got the two banners, the blue and the red banners that are actually, I, I kind of like this. They're too small. I wish they were bigger and stronger, but they go down to that gold foil feature down at the bottom with the, with the all NBA number in it. It's too big. It's, it's just too big. It's like a big field of gold foil. Nothing about it is very strong. So the elements that are strong are too diminished. And then down at the bottom, the strong element is not intriguing. This is a card that's all about the image, that full bleed image. And with basketball, it's tough to make a full bleed image really work because the background is so distracting. So in this case, they did tend to do a good job with image selection. So that's good. You usually can see exactly who you're supposed to be looking at on the card, but the cards don't have their own intrinsic value of pulling you in. That's what the border element is supposed to do. And they are not doing that on this card. So it is very, very, very understated. But then I move over to NBA hoops to the face to face cards. And for these cards, this is, well, it commits a cardinal sin of Chrome. The whole surface of the card is Chrome. Well, okay, not the player. And I do admit that the Chrome effect has a good job of making the, the player pop out and be a lot more distinct. So he is very, very clear on each one of these cards. But Chrome, I've never been a fan of. It's tough to make it work. And the background behind, it's almost like it's hidden and you're not sure what it is. Almost like those heat pressure surfaces that then change color. It kind of has that quality. And once you do see the background, it's, it's a weird stylized background that's not very cool. It is intriguing. It pulls me in. And in some cases it almost kind of works, but it doesn't really work completely. And so this is a case where the Chrome, it actually has a job to do and it actually succeeds in doing its job. It's just the job that it does is not a very good job. And I do like the, the two faces. That's a, that's a cool trick on the card, but Chrome is tough to make work and they sure didn't make it work on this card. So they tried something and it didn't work. But moving on to the, the last of the cards I want to talk about as honorable mentions, you remember what I talked about with the Upper Deck All NBA cards? Well, we're back to that with NBA Hoops. NBA Hoops has a big presence on this list. And here it's Admiral's Choice. And this card has one thing that the All NBA card did not have, which is it has something intriguing with the text up at the top, the gold foil text. And that does it is a, an element that can work really well in complement with, uh, with, in a complement with something else. It, when I look at it, I think of the 1992-93 upper deck basketball cards and the rookies in spe very specifically had no border. So it was a full bleed image. Like with this, the text up at the top for the team name, great, but they had a very, very, very strong element at the bottom that countered the text at the top and made the two work together as a great border element of a, an all time rookie card. Really fantastic. Here, they don't have anything at the bottom. You know, they have the NBA logo and they had the Admiral's Choice logo, but those disappeared. They're not distinct at all. If they did like a gold foil border around the Admiral's Choice logo or something like that, it would have helped so much more because then the text at the top would have been more distinct because it ties to something else and then frames the image. Instead, the text up at the top kind of disappears because it feels like there's nothing else on the card. And the player images are very strong in the set, but this, the cards themselves just kind of disappear. They don't st stand out because there's nothing on the card to make them stand out. Not a good way to operate. But simplicity at its extreme is not great. Well, the same can be said for cards that are too busy because when I move into the top five, at number five, I got Ultra's Jam City cards. And oh my word, is this not the ultimate example of the opposite of what we just saw? I mean, it is just a card screaming from the rafters. And in some ways, I really like this card because it's almost Tim Burton-esque in the background. It's, it's got a weird, cool, folksy, folk art kind of a, a quality that it, it does actually grab my eye and go, huh. Oh. 
and then it's too much in a, in a hurry. But the point of this card isn't the art, it's the brushed metal. And this, this art approach is perfect for brushed metal, making this card so lively and strong. It's not the kind of art that really pulls me in and holds me, but it grabs me for a bit. And then I can move on from it. And the one thing I haven't mentioned is that there is a player somewhere in this card, but you're not likely going to see the player because that whole background is so strong that it completely overpowers the player. When I look at this card, I think of the Muppet Show, and this seems like a sketch where the furniture comes alive and swallows the guest. That's exactly what's going on on this card. And if the card, the rest of the card was a lot more interesting and intriguing, which we were definitely going to be seeing from Ultra, it'd be a lot better. But this is too much of not enough. And it just, as much as I'm not a fan of a bland card that just doesn't do anything, if a card is overpowering and it still doesn't do anything, that's not good either. And that's very much the case here. But when I move over to, to number four, I'm going right back to what we had as the last honorable mention with NBA Hoops. In this case, not Admiral's Choice, but David's Best. So here we have David Robinson himself, a whole series about him. And these cards do the same thing that the Admiral's Choice cards did, except not as well. The only thing this card has is the NBA Hoops logo until you shift the light just right and then the David's Best text pops out with holofoil but most of the time you don't even see it, which means this is just an untethered image. And because it's a couple of images of David Robinson, they didn't select the very best images they possibly could because they needed a bunch of them for the set. So when you do actually get the holofoil to work for the text, now the text doesn't work with the card. It just doesn't look good. It's too much and there's no border to the holofoil. So, if they had had like a black outline, that would have helped. You don't even need to do black. You can look NBA hoops. The logo has red and blue. Use red on the top, blue on the bottom, something like that. Do something to break up the difference between the holofoil and the rest of the card. It'd make a big, it would really be a big help because the holofoil either is impossible to see or it's, it's too much. And I just want the card to be able to work together. At least with Admiral's Choice, it kind of does. Here, not even that. But when I move over to number three, we finally leave NBA Hoops. And now we're moving into the world of Jam Session. And with Jam Session in 1993-94, this to me kind of breaks my heart. Because I really like the card design for the main cards in the set. I don't think they're quite at the level of, of game day but they're really, really close. The best of the Jam Session cards in 1993 for sure. The problem is that while the set looks really good, the inserts don't, very much don't, and Game Breaker is a perfect example of that because here you have that whole wa oil and water kind of tie-dye effect in the back, which is so, so overpowering. And then you also have like a weird grid or something. They have a... A computer effect in front of the the tie-dye trip behind and then there's the player is very clear on these cards but none of the three work together I look at the background and I go okay that is intriguing I wonder what you could do with it not this but I wonder what you could do with it and then the grids and I go I go okay I don't know what you would do with it but it certainly doesn't go with any of this. And then the picture of the player is very, very strong, which is really what you want on these Game Breaker cards, and it doesn't do that. This is a big train wreck of stuff. But exciting? That it certainly is. When I move to number two, to the Jam Session Slam Dunk Heroes cards, okay, this is doing a lot of the same things. It has a trippy, almost psychedelic effect where they took the background and did some weird color effects with it. But the colors tend to be really bland and boring, and there's nothing very, uh, nothing at all lively about that whole mess in the background. So this is a card where the background holds the card back as opposed to overpowers it. When I look at the card, I'm reminded that I was in a choir one time where we sang the song Johnny I Hardly Knew Ye. 
And that is not the most energetic song ever. It is bland, droll, boring. It is droning. And we would go multiple notes flat every time we sang it because it was so depressing. It just pulled us down. Multiple notes is a long way to travel in a choir. And we were a really good choir. It was amazing. But when I look at this card, that's what the background does. It makes the rest of the card depressing. Not a good way to operate. So I look at these two cards and I mean, none of the inserts in 93, 94 game day worked. These two very much did not work. But they're not number one because the number one card I truly do not like, which is Ultra Award Winners. Just no. This is a card that it's chrome. They did the whole background in chrome and then the player stands out from it, only the player doesn't really stand out from it, which means the chrome is overpowering. When the chrome's not really there, you don't really get to see the player. And the background, it doesn't really do anything. For me, chrome is one of those, it's one of the great sins that you will find in, in card design. It's just way too much, and I don't get why they do it. I've never been a fan of it. I, I really, I can't think of any time when it has worked or how it could work. This card in particular, the background is, it, the background wants to do something. Not necessarily brushed metal, but it wants to do something, and it doesn't work with, with the chrome, and then the chrome makes everything hard to see. I mean, when I do the, the photography for these videos, these chrome cards are a nightmare because you can only see the, the interest in it if you have light shining on it. But when you do that, a camera picks up all the light from the, cam from the light and you can't see the card. This is a card that is almost impossible to photograph in a controlled setting. You got to have all the lights on and not have, not worry about color temperature or anything like that in order to get enough general light to make the card come out. I just don't photograph that way. So I'm completely out of luck, but even experiencing the card is very similar where most of the time you, you can't see it. The award winner's text is so tough, even under the best of circumstances to read. It's a mess. I really don't like it. So to me, I really would be surprised if anybody thought that the tie-dye card was even worse than this, because this is a card that just, if you take away the chrome, it's so much better, guys. That It really does come, to do, to come down to that. Why do you use chrome? I think it's a mess. At any rate, that's what I have for my list of the worst insert cards for basketball in 1993. So let, you know, leave comments down below for your take on what should be on the list or how it should be order, in order. If there's one card that just stands out is really bad past all the others, definitely let me know in, in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed, I do urge you to do so. And thank you very much for watching.